Okay, so today, guys, I wanted to go over the five main things that Allah gave me and blessed me with uh, through the Arabic language. طيب, inshallah. So I'm going to go st straight into the point and I'm going to share this with you because when you when you do tafakkur and ta'amul and uh, you know and, and you pound upon these things you you are really grateful for what you for what you have uh, in terms of the Arabic language so I'm going to share this with you guys inshallah and uh, and hopefully that this will benefit someone and and perhaps push you even more to start learning the Arabic language or to uh, continue learning the Arabic language at a you know I a higher speed I would say so first of all um, first of all uh, learning the Arabic language it gave me more taqwa it gave me more taqwa and taqwa you can define this as being um, you know the thing that prevents you from uh, from falling into from falling into sin basically or the thing that prevents you from going to hellfire so there is always a little kind of like a like a wall in between certain things which I ask Allah that he helps me to keep it that way uh, but there is certain things that you know obviously we all humans and we all uh, have habits from our times where we were in practicing at least most of us that are hard to get rid of and are hard to uh, to you know to just stop but you know little by little the more knowledge you gain the the easier it is to erase all of those things and drop those bad habits but there is things that perhaps you used to do before that right now just because you know arabic and through knowing arabic you have been exposed to way more understanding of uh, of certain aspects of the religion and and certain you know verses verses certain hadith uh certain things like for example being able to be in a private room with with uh, sheikh Saleh suhaimi or um or you know different mashaykh uh, uh from al kuwait where they speak about things that they wouldn't speak in public and you'd be like subhanallah like like oh my god like, this is actually the scholars like they actually talk about these things obviously it's good things but it's things that that if i didn't know arabic i wouldn't be exposed to and so certain things like this that you have lived you know obviously if you are if you don't know arabic you are exposed to the hadith well the translation of the ahadith the translation of the mushaf um you know speakers and things like that but it's not the same way you are exposed by experience to things like actual things like i said for example as an example uh being in a private room with different scholars or being able to 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 be in the middle of the haram while they are making adhan and uh, you know get close to sheikh uh, wasiullah al abbas and, and tap his shoulder and and ask him uh, a question there is certain things that if if i didn't know arabic i would never be exposed to that and and so it gives you a different type of understanding, which equals to give you a, a different type of, of taqwa and a different type of not only taqwa, but muru'a. There is certain things that just because the knowledge that Allah has gave you, and I'm not saying by, by no means that I have knowledge, but the knowledge that, uh, that, that Allah gave me, the, the limited knowledge that Allah gave me in the Arabic language in different, in different things, um, you know, it it gives you a different type of understanding. It give you it's even hard to put into words, to be honest. But what I'm trying to say is that that um, that certain things you know them through nusus, through texts, and through and through uh, you know text verses, etc. And 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 other certain things you you gain that taqwa, that type of taqwa comes with experiences, kind of thing like, you know, something might happen and and then it makes you say, subhanAllah, after this, it's not even you say it, it's just, it's just in you, it's encrypted in you basically. So, so that's the first thing, I don't want to make this too long, but it gave me more taqwa. And this is also, also something that I was uh, talking about with, uh, with sister, uh, 
Um, khawla as well. One thing I've noticed in Arab, uh, one thing I've noticed is that, you know, people who, who start practicing, mm-hmm. and like for a couple of months, they can actually fall back, right? Mm. Some people can fall back and they stop practicing and they go back to the jahiliya time. So when they're in the jahiliya time, and they go practicing, they can actually fall back, right? Mm-hmm. But for me, this is why I noticed. If you know the Arabic language, the more you know, basically, the more you know. The more you have knowledge of the Arabic language or in the deen, the more you have fear of Allah Azawajal, right? You have khashatillah, you fear Allah Azawajal even more, right? I feel like the people who are practicing and they learn Arabic, they reach to Allah, like they learn Arabic, they cannot go back They cannot go back to how they used to be. That's what I think. They cannot yeah. go back because even Allah Azawajal says, هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ mm-hmm. Or those who know equal to those who do not know. And no. Of course, the answer is no. They're not the mm-hmm. same. So I feel like those who know Arabic and those who have learned Arabic, they're in a level that basically you cannot fall back to how it used to be. Even if your iman is very low, you cannot fall back to how it used to be. And because you know, you mm-hmm. know, because you know, you have more knowledge and you, alhamdulillah, that's what I've realized. But if you're practicing and you do not know Arabic, wallahi, even though you know the deen, you can just easily fall back because you don't know the Quran. You don't know what yeah. Allah is saying in the Quran. I'm pretty sure that many other people um, thinks about this and 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 realizes this once they they learn they learn the Arabic language. So yeah, that's the first thing. It gave me more taqwa. Now the second thing is that it gave me ease to memorize and ease to expand my knowledge uh, if I want to. Because like I said, there's certain certain things that uh, if you don't know the Arabic language, it's either going to be so hard for you to memorize or is either going to be so difficult for you to understand the actual, the actual, you know, original meaning and, and not just that, because me as being someone who's, who speaks uh, five different languages, and this is something as well that we agreed on with, uh, with the brother, um, with the brother Abdul Fattah, who's a polyglot as well, is that when you learn a language, not only you learn the language, but you learn the you learn why people behave that way in in that particular culture. You learn the culture as well through the language. I would say, Akhib, that every language that you add to your own own you know, personality, it opens you up a little bit more about like in general. Mm-hmm. Like it gives you, it gives you like, okay, that's how. Now I understand why French people move like that. Now I understand why yeah, yeah, yeah. Spanish people like that. Now I understand why, yeah. from that perspective, like the psychological. It helped me a lot because I I wasn't I, I never felt strange being around. So thir- certain things like you know this is why there is the eloquence and al balagha fil lugha, um, and it gives you a different type of understanding just because you understand how the people that speaks this language thinks and what are the the adad the, the 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 you know the the culture of that language and the people who speaks that language and and. And you know uses that language as a day-to-day language basically so so not only it helps you to understand and expand your knowledge and in in the Deen but as well it helps you to memorize so 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 much easier so imagine imagine right uh, oh that might be a bad example but but uh, if I give you a some song lyrics is in your language right so if you repeat it ten times it will probably be easier to memorize than something that you don't understand what it means. Just because if you memorize something that you are understanding, you can pretty much remember what, what's coming next. So when, when you learn the Arabic language as well, I, and I did experience this, memorizing the Quran before knowing the Arabic language and memorizing the Quran after learning the Arabic language, it, it wasn't the same. It was like the level of difference. It was like being able to memorize half a page per day and really struggling to being able to memorize per day three pages and not only that but understand understand them and not with the hevel not with the have the the daif hevel but the actual good hevel that you are able to to recite mainly the ayat that have stories in it or the ayat that are you know more towards the the middle of the mushaf and the beginning of it um and, and being able to read the, the tafsir 
of the thing that of the page that you are memorizing and being like oh subhanallah you know it's aha moments that makes you oh wow like you know i will never forget again it's like when you are revising and someone points at you a mistake that you keep doing and just because they pointed at you in a certain way maybe harsh or maybe or maybe in that particular moment it, it makes it, it stops you all of a sudden and it makes you feel like oh subhanallah i'm not making this mistake it makes you not forget again so so that's the second thing that it gave me ease to memorize ease, ease to expand um my knowledge in in different fields obviously of um of uh of the deen and not only that but learning the arabic language of course is a you know is a practice for your brain learning a new language is just as as simple as that learning a new language is a is a training so there is no doubt that it will give you more intelligence and uh and uh and you know people will look at you different when you learn different languages just because i mean you need some kind of you know do you need to some kind of intelligence or some kind of some kind of uh, you know level upper than the a level above mediocrity to learn a new language basically and to be able to not only learn it but speak it fluently and understand it etc etc i am certified to um be a translator for mm -hmm. arabic because i um took my test here in college okay. So I'm actually certified. I can put it on my resume. I can um, actually translate like element like is a bit uh, advanced a little bit, but I can translate as an Arabic um, translator. So mm. that that was another thing. And that always helps people be like, oh, you speak three languages like for, yeah. in America. That's a big deal because you get hired faster. The more languages you speak, the better like job employment, even school. Like I went for an interview for an internship and I got it because they're like, oh, my God, you know, three languages, you're this, yeah. you're that like. It, it shows a certain type of intelligence kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they always like so that. So that's the second thing. Ease to memorize and ease to expand my knowledge, not only in the Arabic language and in the Deen, but in different many aspects of, of life, just because it gives you more intelligence. So it allows you to, to understand, uh, you know, other things in life differently. Now, the third thing, which is probably one of the best ones after, you know, giving you more taqwa independently, is that... Not only that, but because the big change that it that it you know the it's it changes you as a person. So if you learn Arabic for the right intention with the right intentions, it will change you to to better. And so that caused my my family to change as well, just because they seen me before, they then seen me they seen me after learning the Arabic language, and that caused literally all my sisters to to you know to get married, start wearing hijab. Uh, you know, f form families. It caused, um, you know, different, different, um, different uh, members of my family starting wearing hijab from the female side, then from my uh, and from my... the from the male side as well. It caused, you know, uh, for them to to actually, uh, you know, start start having a beard. Uh, praying, ac praying actually more because I mean to be honest, I grew up as a as a Muslim. You know, my parents were Muslim when I was born, etc. But just to, to just to make you understand, like how how uh, ignorance was abundant in my family. That the first day I remember, I still remember when I when I lived literally above this this apartment. Um, I I got up for Fajr. And my father told me, where are you going? I said, I'm going to, to pray Fajr. He said, this is a prayer just for, for righteous people. You don't need to do that. Like you just, and obviously I was already 16, 17. And when he says you don't need to do that, obviously he doesn't do it either. So you can see the amount of, you know, the level of, of ignorance that was, uh, that was around my family. And so me, you know, leaving to Egypt and learning Arabic, coming back, seeing that my family, seeing the difference in my in my behavior and in, in how I speak, how I wear different things, obviously to better. Uh, it caused literally all my family. Like you'll be so my, the the friends of family close to my family, they were they were surprised and that causes that that caused the second the second the next point which is the fourth point which is social status. It gave me as well social status. 
I remember, and this is kind of awkward sometimes, and it makes me sometimes, you know, make me not want want to go some places just because people they, you know, like learning the Arabic language, it will put you in a in the smallest percentage of of the Muslims because it's only a small percentage who actually nowadays practice and not only practices but actually give their life to that to the to the knowledge to knowledge right so me for example when i go to the masjid here in barcelona in my hometown where where like they seen me start practicing they seen my before they seen my after so obviously as i said it's a little bit of a package of everything but when you learn arabic obviously it changes it changes you so now when i go to the masjid here i get a overwhelming respect and so that's what i mean by social status like you know it gets overwhelming because you know your you know your your you know your level you know your spot and people they just think that um that you know that uh that because the little you know you are someone so big but Looking at the good aspect of this, you can actually use, if you have the right intention, you can actually use this the right way. Because, because people start to looking up to you and looking at you with different eyes. So what that, what that does is that your words now are going to have a heavier weight. So obviously you need to watch what you say. But if you look, use it in the right way, you can literally with one word change people's life. Like literally me. When I left to Egypt, it was literally one word of one person that I can still remember and I can still remember where he was sitting and what he said. And it was as simple as him saying... This change that you uh, went through, you said you started to become more sincere in your practice as a Muslim. Is that what ultimately brought you to uh, Egypt to attend the Azhar? No. Um, what made me come to Egypt, I remember uh, as, um, a speaker... I remember listening to him during Ramadan. He was talking uh, about the people who uh, complained that the, the tarawih is too long. And we don't understand why people cry. And we don't understand why, why people are so, so deep and have too much khushur. And they were complaining in a way that it's no good, that it's too, too, too long because we don't understand Arabic. So the speaker, he was saying, well, maybe the problem is with you and not with the imam that he's making it too long. And maybe what you want to do is to learn Arabic. Mm. So I took that as a, you know, I, it made sense for me. Mm. So I remember meeting a, meeting a French brother whose mother or father was a Spanish in a mosque in, in France. And uh, I remember being in Spain and because in my neighborhood it wasn't a lot of young Muslims, I felt really, really lonely. So I used to travel to France sometimes and uh, because I, I knew practicing brothers there and I used to go there and... Uh, and kind of try to get some iman from them, some more knowledge from them. And I used to feel good, and and it was uh, <coughs> like it was my charger for my iman, basically friends. Mm -hmm. So I met this brother, and he gave me uh, he gave me a little pam pamphlet of uh, of a school in in Alexandria to learn Arabic. So my first intention coming to Egypt was to learn Arabic to understand the Quran. Mm -hmm. So I came to Alexandria for one year, uh, learned Arabic, then came to Cairo. And uh, you know, answer the the, the last the university. Mm -hmm. I went first in the me just hearing this, it changed my it changed my life. And that person had that respect, and he was sitting in front of you know tens of of people. So so social that's something that it gives you social that it gives you as well social status, learning the Arabic language, uh, which you can use in 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 good, and obviously as you can use as in bad as well, but. But you know, looking at the positive side, uh, you can change people's lives, and by and through changing people's lives, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will um, will give you better. And then the last thing that that it gave me as well, the fifth thing, the fifth uh, thing is finan financial gains. Literally, I remember when I was about to to get married, and I went to my wife's uh, house to ask for for her hand. I was I was 18. I was broke. I didn't have anything to offer other than than my religion and my seriousness. I I guess and my commitment. So so they asked me like, what are you gonna do after like you don't have nothing, right? 
and I was like, yeah, I'm just going. I'm just going to go to to study in Egypt. But obviously nowadays, saying that it sounds like okay. So well, how is that gonna give you any type of sustainable income to to take care of, of my daughter, right? So uh, so I just knew. I was like, yeah, inshallah, I'll make it happen. No worries, inshallah, I'll figure it out. So eventually, they allow me to 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 marry her. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, that at that time as well, they were my parents were helping me out to to uh, you know taking care of me to seek knowledge. So that was a blessing. But at the moment, right now, being you know, I have been able to you know, is the skill is your skill like, and and there's always people offering me um, you know. Um, money to literally teach them uh, what I've learned Arabic and there's nothing wrong with that you know um, same way I have spent thousands of dollars being in uh, in, in Egypt getting robbed as well uh, right now is only your your right to to give back in sadaqah with what you have gained uh, of knowledge and and to actually to actually live of it so you know um um charge people for what you for for the quality uh that you give so so on not only that but to give you something more realistic it it allowed me to save fifteen thousand euros for my my grandmother she passed away uh the 27th of march rahimahallah she was a Christian woman who, uh, subhanAllah, you see, I forgot about this. When, once I came back from Egypt, not only my, f my family from, the, from my father's side, and my mom and my father's side started to practice, practice more, but my grandmother as well, she accepted Islam after I spoke to her. And, and in my family, it was such a weird thing like, to do, like to speak about religion. But I was like, no, I really, you know, my my grandmother at that time was like 92, 93. She passed, no, she was maybe 90 because she passed away in March and she was around 94. So, so, so she accepted Islam. She took sh her shahada and everything. And, and basically what I'm trying to say is that uh, learning the Arabic language, it, it has allowed me to save 15,000 euros and give them to my mom. To take care of the heri the heritage the heritage because in in uh, in Spain well I, I, I guess probably in other countries as well when you get a heritage 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 right from uh, any any of your family members um, you actually have to pay taxes and those taxes were thirty thousand euros so fifteen thousand ma it came from it was on my uh aunt side and then the other fifteen thousand was on my mom's side but literally if it wasn't because of Allah and then this money that I was able to save she probably I don't know what she would have done. Like she was literally so okay the last option it would it would be to to give the apartment to to the government which obviously that's why they make it hard and for for them to you know anyways but um but alhamdulillah we were able to pay and keep the apartment so so that's another another you know another uh uh asset that my mom has now thanks to to allah and then this uh this aspect of learning the arabic language and being able to save this amount of money so so yeah arabic can give you all of this literally it can give you taqwa it can give you you know just to keep it simple, dunya gains and akhirah gains. And then think about, like me, for example, I will never forget my teacher, Abdul Tawab, Hafidhullah, may Allah increase him in, 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 uh, in a dunya wal akhirah. And, and literally, when I think about all the hasanat, inshallah, if, he, if, you know, if his intentions are right, that he has just, to, just for teaching me Arabic, because literally all I know. Is thanks to Allah and then and then Him, so you know you can do actually the same or even better by by um, by helping people people out learning the Arabic language and and it will give you it will give you it will give you social uh, it will give you dunya uh, 
you know benefits as it will give you akhirah benefits as well uh such as you know as um as i said financial gains and, and akhirah gains hasanat and things and things of that nature inshallah so so guys i want to make this long uh it's been already a little bit long so barakallah fikum wa jazakum allah khair wa faqan allah wa iyaakum kulli ma yuhibbu wa yarda wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh